So now let's look at profit maximization decisions in the labor market. Now, as always, it's assumed that um, employers are trying to maximize their profits. Uh, employers are always going to look at the marginal changes in an effort to maximize these profits. And so when determining output, they're going to look at this idea, the idea of the marginal revenue versus the marginal cost of each unit. And we talked about how there's two ways they can, or there's two factors they can use to produce the output, and that's the labor and the capital. Okay. So, oops. so there's a couple, let's look at a couple areas here. So in general, firms will continue to hire if the, if it's profitable to do so. And so they're going to hire a worker if the marginal revenue product of labor, which is the additional revenue of hiring an additional worker, is greater than the marginal expense of labor. And the marginal expense of labor is um, the additional cost of employing an additional unit of labor. Okay? So the marginal revenue products is the revenue you get from an employing an additional unit, and the marginal expense is the additional cost of employing an additional unit. And profits are going to be maximized where the two are equal to each other. So let's assume that um, markets are competitive. I'm going to go through this step by step. So if the, mar if the labor market is competitive, that marginal expense of labor is equal to the wage. Okay, It gets determined by the market where the supply equals the demand. Right? And so that's what um, that wage is. Okay, So now let's look at the firm. The firm, how are they going to decide how much they want to employ? Well, again, so the marginal expense equals the wage. This profit maximization point, the marginal revenue product labor, where it equals the marginal expense of labor, that's where it's the maximal profit maximizing. Because anywhere up to that point, they're going to make more revenue than it's going to cost them. So their profits are going to go up as they employ up to that point. So you know, so we have the marginal revenue product of labor equals marginal expense of labor. But again, we know that the marginal expense of labor equals the wage. Well, if we go back, the marginal revenue product of labor is, where is that here? Here's. It's the marginal product of labor times the marginal revenue. Right. And so we have marginal product labor times the marginal revenue of the product and profit maximizing is where that equals the wage. Okay. Now, if we assume that it's a competitive product market, which we're going to do as a starting point. And so if that's the case, that marginal revenue is just equal to price. So you have the marginal product of labor equals, oops, sorry, times the price of the good equals the wage. And then if we divide both sides by price, we get the marginal product of labor equals the wage divided by the price. So let me, this, let's look a little better here. So this right here, okay, this is the profit maximizing level of output. It's where the marginal product of labor equals this W over P, which is known as the real wage. Because so remember back we talked about real wage. The real wage is the wage adjusting for prices. So it's really in terms of buying power, purchasing power. So you're, it's, it's an idea of looking at it. So the marginal product is in terms of output, and the real wage is a um, basically unit free in a way. It's um, non, not in dollars, it's in terms of units. Okay. So 
So let's look here. So let's say we have this real wage. And so if you remember, let me take this off here. And let's this, this. So if you remember back when we talked about you know the market, we said that the wage was determined by the market and the price determined by the market. And so this W over P, it's a um, it's some fixed amount. Okay, so it's some fixed number. Wage is determined by the market and the price is determined by the market. Different markets, but and if you also remember, we talked about the marginal product of labor. We said the marginal product of labor was downward sloping. Okay. As labor goes up, okay, the marginal product goes down. You have that diminishing returns. Because again, there's only so much capital that can be um, spread out across them. Right. So let's say that we had this, you know, this real wage here. Right. So let's look at this level right here. And let's say this is L star. Right. Well, let's say we are, now remember, the marginal product of labor right, is in units. It's in terms of output. And the real wage, all right, it's taking, it's talking about buying power, so that's in units as well. So let's say that we are at um, this right here, all right. So instead of producing L star, we're producing at um, L zero. Well, at this L zero, the marginal product is greater than the real wage, and so what's happening is you're getting more in output from the from the worker than it's costing you. Because again, everything's in units in this case. All right. So in that case, you're making a profit on the worker. Let's say we have, uh, let's just say L1 down here, which is right here. Here, still, you're gonna make you're be making more from the worker as the firm, you're gonna be receiving more than you're paying. And so by employing both L0 and going from L0 to L1, you're making profits. All right. You're going to be making more in production than you are, it's going to be costing you in the real wage. And so what's going to happen is we're going to keep getting over to this point right here. Now, if you go past that, let's say we're here, at this point, you're going to be paying more to the worker than the worker is going to be giving you an output. Okay. And so with all of this, uh, what's going to be happening is, you know, if you go past this point here, um, you're going to be losing money because the worker is going to be costing you more than they're going to be giving you. So what's going to happen, and let me erase this here. Let's get all this in here. And so what's going to happen is for any given level of, um, so you have a real wage here. And so if, so, so we have our, so we have our marginal product of labor. And so if this was the real wage, this was how much labor would be demanded. Okay, this is how much labor the firm would want. Because if we go back here, uh, here's. Remember that this is where firm maximize their profit. So they maximize their profit where the marginal product labor equals the real wage. Let's say that, um, and so if this is the real wage, this would be how much labor was demanded. Let's say that this is the real wage. In that case, this is how much the firm would demand. Because again, they're market. Um, mark our profit maximizers. And so with all of this, the marginal product of labor, because at any given level of um, real wage, that's what where the two equal each other, that's what they're going to um, demand. The marginal product of labor ends up equaling 
the demand for labor. So let's get this out of here again. And it's back here. And so what you're going to have is you're going to have that, or sorry, this is in um, dollar terms, or sorry, this, this is in real, and so that's going to be your marginal product of labor. But you could easily just do it as the, um, because you don't view, you don't see real wages really, you just see what the wages are. And so you're going to see the marginal revenue product of labor and the wage, because if we go back here, you also maximize profit where the um, marginal revenue product of labor equals the wage. And so with that, you're also going to have your demand for labor looking at it this way. Okay. So this is why, this is how you form the downward sloping demand curve. It has to do with the fact that you maximize your profits, and this is in the short run, um, because when you look at this, you're only choosing labor. Right? And with this, um, it's where the marginal product labor equals the real wage, or where the marginal revenue product labor equals the wage. But in each case, that's how you get to this point. That's how... Um, the demand for labor is formed.